Some of the short-term consequences of the government shutdown have been disastrous, and uh, specifically when we look at the VA, you see a lot of this. The VA uh, has taken disability claims production and slowed it down tremendously by an average of about 1,400 per day, and that has stalled the department's efforts to reduce the horrendous backlog of disability claims pending for uh, longer than 125 days. But now we're inching towards the long-term consequences, which are even worse. About 3.8 million veterans will not receive disability compensation next month if the partial government uh, shutdown continues into late October. Some 315,000 veterans and 202,000 surviving spouses and dependents will see pension payments stopped. So this is really upsetting stuff. In all, more than $6 billion in payments would be halted with an extended shutdown. So here's my question. Whatever happened to supporting the troops? I mean, remember you couldn't go three minutes back in 2004 without some Republican chanting it and accusing Democrats of being with the terrorists and being unpatriotic. And they remember they made, said John Kerry doesn't support the troops and they used this as a disgusting attack to try to bring him down and make him lose the election. Yet now Republicans are in favor of a shutdown that leaves our troops out to dry. So when push comes to shove and it's time to actually show through your actions that you support the troops, where are they? They are nowhere to be found. And this story reminds me of this brilliant segment from a Noam Chomsky talk. The point of, of, of uh, public relations slogans like support our troops is that they don't mean anything. They mean as much as whether you support the people in Iowa. Of course, there was an issue. The issue was, do you support our policy? But you don't want people to think about the issue. That's the whole point of good propaganda. You want to create a slogan that nobody's going to be against, and I suppose everybody will be for, because nobody knows what it means, because it doesn't mean anything. But its crucial value is it diverts your attention from a question that does mean something. Do you support our policy? And that's the one you're not allowed to talk about. So you have people arguing about, do I support the troops? You know, of course I, I don't will not support them, and so on. And then you've won. That's like Americanism and harmony. We're all together, you know, empty slogans. Uh, uh, let's somehow join in them. Let's make sure that we don't have these bad people around who disrupt all of our harmony with their talk about class struggle and their rights and that sort of business. Well, that's all very effective. It runs right up to today. And of course, it is carefully thought out. You know, the people in the public relations industry aren't there for the fun of it. Uh, they're doing work. They're trying to instill the right values. Uh, in fact, they have a conception of what a democracy ought to be. It ought to be a system in which the specialized class are trained in order to do their work for the service of the masters, and the rest of the population ought to be deprived of any form of organization because organization just causes trouble. Uh, they ought to be sitting alone in front of the television set and having drilled into their heads daily the message which says the only value in life is to have more commodities or to live like that rich middle class family you're watching. Uh, and to be, have nice values like harmony and Americanism. And that's all there is in life. You may think in your own head that there's got to be something more in life than this, but since you're watching the tube alone, you assume I must be crazy because that's all that's going on over there. And since there is no organization permitted, that's absolutely crucial. You never have a way of finding out whether you're crazy uh, and, and, uh, uh, and you just assume it because it's the natural thing to assume. Uh, so that's, that's the ideal. And great efforts are made into trying to achieve that ideal, and there is a certain conception of democracy behind it. The conception of democracy is the one that I mentioned. The bewildered herd are a problem. We've got to prevent their rage and trampling. Uh, we've got to distract them. Um, they should be watching the Super Bowl or sitcoms or, you know, violent movies or something. Every once in a while you call on them to chant meaningless slogans like support our troops uh, and uh, uh, you scare, you got to keep them pretty scared because unless they're scared properly and frightened of all kind of devils that are going to destroy them uh, from outside you know or inside or somewhere they may start to think which is very dangerous because they're not competent to think uh, and therefore it's important to distract them and marginalize them. Anybody can say support the troops. The question is 
how? How do we support it? How do you define supporting the troops? And here's the answer to that. You don't send them to pointless wars. You don't cut off their disability over a stupid partisan fight about a law that passed in 2009. You don't cut off their spousal support, surviving spousal support. These things are obvious, man. That's how you actually support the troops. Remember the old phrase, actions speak louder than words? That's totally true. But on the Republican side of the aisle, all they have is words. They have no actions to back it up when they say, we support the troops. No, you don't. If you support the troops, you would end the government shutdown today, today, and make sure you pay every dime to the veterans.